So the question is who should want to attend this talk? And it's really all about packaging Rust projects for Fedora. And um, so it's people, everything I'm gonna talk about is sort of how to um, manage upstream Rust projects so they behave well when you're packaging for Fedora and in general. So it's just generally people who have that on their minds who should be interested in this talk. And um, who am I? My name, the, what you should call me is Mulhern if you want to. Um, I'm the Stratus team tech lead and I do a lot of the Fedora updates for the Rust packages that are part of the Stratus project, although I don't think I actually originated the Fedora package of any one of them. And I do a lot of the upstream packaging of the Rust packages too. So that's my experience, so I thought about it. And that's why I'm talking about it today. So um, ask questions um, as much as you feel like, um, but obviously we've already had technical difficulties, so we'll see if there are any more that cause problems, but I'll try to keep a bit of an eye on the chat. chat. Okay. So my goal is just to manage the de dependency requirements for all the packages in the project so that they can be packaged correctly upstream so that they're correct and so they're safe for Fedora. And so, of course, you might wonder what those vague words mean, and I'm going to define those um, immediately. So before, though, I have to say something about versions and version requirements because they get muddled when we talk about them all the time because they're sort of similar looking. And so um, a version is just that thing, a version of a single concrete entity, sort of a snapshot of your project. But the version requirement is a way of specifying a whole range of versions that you consider acceptable. And for those who aren't familiar with um, Rust, Rust cargo files use the special caret syntax but that's just sugar for a compound um, specification indicating greater than or equal to something and less than that other thing. Okay, so here's the complicated picture of Fedora packaging and the things that influence it. And you have to imagine that those um, greenish yellow slabs are some versions of a package on crates.io and um, we need to have at least some version in order to compile because we use, say, some methods that aren't defined until this version 2.1.0. And um, for whatever reason, maybe there was a bug fix that we wanted, we specify using this caret syntax that anything 2.1.1 or above up to 3.0 is good. And so when we compile our package on, in RCI, it's kind of a toss up which um, version of the crate we'll actually use. So there are five possible versions of the crate, crate we might be um, running our tests on. And then the highest one packaged in Fedora in this picture is 2.2.1. And we'll also mention that there's a CVE against 2.2.0 for some reason, and that's why 2.2.1 was created no doubt. But in this picture, everything is good. So that's the point. We specify this caret 2.1.1, but that works with Fedora, and it's high enough so that everything will compile. So this picture is a reasonably happy situation. And so now I'm going to go on to where problems arise. Okay, so what we don't want to do is specify, this would be unsafe, specify in our cargo.toml file a dependency version or rather a requirement such that it can't be, can't be satisfied in Fedora now. So the way Fedora works, Fedora packaging works, is that every package that your package depends on is required to also be packaged in Fedora. And so for those who are used to using um, in their Rust packages, cargo.lock, I'll just say the Fedora packaging process throws away the cargo.lock file entirely and then has its own way of trying to find Fedora packages that satisfy those version requirement specifications. And if 
these are not satisfied, Fedora packaging fails, and then you have a problem. So this is a picture of a bad satu situation. For whatever reason, this project is specifying the CARAT 2.2.2 specification. That's higher than what is packaged in Fedora. And so even though upstream is fine and everything's cool, when we go to package in Fedora, we'll have a problem. Packaging will simply fail. And so some people might say that's not a big problem because you can always just patch your um, cargo.toml file before you do the packaging and so forth and so on. And in a sense, um, that isn't, but we'll see, I'll discuss sort of in more depth what this is all about here. So, um, so you can deal with this problem that I just showed you the picture of in a bunch of ways. Yeah. I agree with that thing. It's exactly what happens in Rust too. Wait, actually, let me, I can talk about that in more detail, I think. But anyway, so here we are in Fedora and we don't want to get into this bad situation. There's a couple ways. There's a few ways we can do it. One may, way is to be the packager. So if you're the packager of the dependency, if you're the upstream developer and the Fedora packager of the dependency, you don't have a problem. So um, I was going to mention that there's going to be a talk tomorrow. But um, in that, we can, you can discuss how to put things inside tags, maybe. And since you're the, you have total control over the, the Fedora package and upstream, you can manage how those all go in together and you're good. So it's not something I want to even bother to talk about here because the problem is covered, but it's also not like a scalable solution. You can't be responsible for every package in Fedora. So another way to make sure that you don't get this problem is to explicitly coordinate with the Fedora packagers of all your dependencies. But that's a pretty high friction thing to do. And it's not, it's more, it's sort of trouble that you don't want to take on unless it's something you actually want to do. So what we do is we automate checks of the Fedora repos so that our direct dependencies lag what's available in the Fedora releases. We have a script, it's a Python script. We run the script in our CI so that we will immediately find out if in cargo.tamo we have a spec that can't be satisfied in Fedora. If it is necessary for our direct dependency version to exceed what is available in Fedora, if we really, really need that, then we fall back on either of the two options above that I crossed out. We also run the script nightly and it tells us if there's a new semantically incompatible release of some dependency in Fedora and then whenever is convenient, we move up to it. So that's the whole story of that one. And so I'm just gonna sum up how this works. So because we do this, we're put, putting an upper limit or a downward pressure on our dependency requirements. And what we would encourage people to do is to put this infrastructure in Rust, sorry, in their upstream um, packages and not in Fedora, if they're concerned about making packaging easy in Fedora. Okay, so um, to go back, that's the safety for Fedora as I define it. But um, correctness for upstream is a different idea entirely. And this correctness, as in the picture that I showed you earlier, puts a lower limit, it pushes things up. And its place is, to, is also in upstream development and releasing, but it's not actually really so Fedora specific, although it was motivated by some of our Fedora packaging concerns. Okay, so this is a picture of a mistake. So here we specify the caret 2.1.0 dependency in cargo.tamo, but we really need the 2.2.3 um, version in order for our code 
to compile. We don't find that out doing CI because the 2.1.0 specification allows all six of these possible versions of the crate. And by the time we um, added the dependency on the method or the feature that was in 2.2.3, we were already running against that version in all our CI. So we never knew it and we packaged everything up happily. And then it turned out that it wouldn't, that our mistake would be caught by Fedora packaging because in this picture again, in the diagram, Fedora packaging only goes up to 2.2.1. So Fedora packaging satisfies correctly what we say is true but then our program can't compile and then we have a problem, an unpleasant surprise. Okay, so how do we address this? Well, one way is to aggressively boost our direct event dependency requirements whenever um, a new version comes out. And that way, what we say we need is never gonna be lower than what we're using. But that's kind of aggressive. And one way, of course, is to be slightly less aggressive, but only to boost to the highest that Fedora supports. But we're actually interested in um, being correct for a, for, for a broader set of downstream users, but not, not really just Fedora, but all these people who might be packaging. And so what we want to do is specify the lowest specification that actually works with our code. So what we do in this case is we run a script, it's another Python script that runs cargo update until every direct dependence, until the dependency that we're actually running against is the lowest one that is compatible with the version specification that we have. Then we build the project now that every, all these values are actually down and um, if the build, if it fails to compile, then clearly the dependency that we specify is too low and the compiler error will helpfully tell us which of these dependencies are too low with a little insight. Okay. So this approach has been working actually fairly well for us for, um, for a year or so. But when I was writing up this talk, I noticed the um, flaws in it. And so I'll just mention those. One of the flaws of the approach is that our scripts are written in Python, not in Rust. And they actually, this is not just Rust boosterism, they actually should be written in Rust because then they would take advantage of um, the appropriate parsing and data structures in the cargo metadata and semver crates, which match how cargo actually understands stuff. Um, let's see. So the other thing is um, they don't act, there aren't gen any actually general in the way that they calculate the lowest version that satisfies the requirements. And I've actually had some ideas on that problem that I was coming up with. But the reason I only thought about it recently while I was working on this talk is it's never been a problem for us in the whole last year because we use those caret specifications and we assume they're there. And because if there's an audit failure, which might um, encourage us to have a not equals part of the specification, like skip this thing, then we actually don't use it. We just go usually, we have always just bumped our requirement above the version that has the CVE. So um, that concludes my talk and barely in time. Um, so I'm actually gonna respond to um, Fabio's one remark, um, cargo minimal versions was tried and failed already. So this is what I, you know, I hope this would solve the problem a long time ago. 
But the problem is it tries to force everything, every transitive dependency down to the lowest possible. And in order to solve our problem, we only wanted to tweak the ones that our package um, specifically request, directly requested. So yeah, cargo, cargo minimal versions was tried and would not, yeah, would not solve our problem. Um, okay, so that there's a question in a QA, which is just um, a, a very ba basic question, really. Where should I start if I want to package a Rust app in Fedora Linux? And I would say a good place to start is if you can go to the workshop that's being held tomorrow that um, Fabio is is going to give um, because that's going to, um, my understanding is that's going to start from the beginning and should answer a lot of questions. Bye, everybody. <laughs>